A chopper brings down a team of scientists commanded by Dr. Morbius at the entrance to a cave in the Costa Rican mountains. Morbius has a rare blood illness that necessitates him to walk with canes, so he directs his team to set up the trap they've brought. Then he takes a step forward, raising his bloodied hand to the heavens. All of the bats in the cave should be enticed into the trap. The squad and the pilot escape in fear, while Morbius merely waits. It all began in Greece 25 years ago. Morbius is a patient at the hospital, where Dr. Nicholas introduces him to Milo, a youngster Morbius nicknames. Both children have the same uncommon blood disorder and have an instant connection, expressing the same yearning to be normal. Milo's machine suddenly fails and he exits the room while they are speaking. Morbius fixes the contrivance with a spring from his pen, and Milo awakens immediately. Morbius' intelligence impresses Nicholas, who plans to send him to a top New York school, but Morbius agrees only if Nicholas promises to look after Milo. Morbius leaves a note for Milo, offering to find a solution to their problem. Milo searches for the letter after it accidentally falls from his hands, only to discover that some rude kids from the nearby school are reading it and criticizing him. The group begins to beat up Milo for amusement, but Nicholas arrives and scares them away before they cause substantial damage, and he also has to prevent Milo from seeking revenge. Morbius receives his doctorate at the age of 19 and goes on to create artificial blood, which saves millions of lives. The King of Sweden intends to offer him the Nobel Prize, but he declines because he discovered artificial blood by accident while hunting for a remedy for his disease. Returning to the present, Morbius returns to his job at the hospital, where he is approached by his co-worker Dr. Martin for a private talk. While doing many tests on him, she asks about Morbius' odd aim to merge human and bat DNA, which Milo is funding. Morbius pretends not to understand what she's saying, but when Martin shows him his tank full of Colombian bats, he concedes the truth. Morbius believes that because these bats are the only species on the planet that survive purely on blood, their saliva may contain the key to treating his affliction. Morbius then puts his experimental serum to the test on a lab rat. Sadly, the fed-up rat gets slain. Because one of Morbius' patients is suffering a seizure at the time, they rush to her room and have no choice but to induce a coma to save her from a possible stroke. Martine comes to the lab and is shocked to see the rat move, signaling that the serum is working. Morbius later meets with Milo to notify him of his success and to request additional funding. Because this experiment is illegal, he must conduct it on international waters, and Milo is willing to pay anything to find a cure. Morbius takes Martine with him to foreign seas to test his newly invented serum. She injects him in the spine and buckles him as his body begins to shake. When a crew member arrives to check on them, Martine confronts him, allowing Morbius to flee. Martine and the guard enter the isolation chamber to find Morbius crawling on the ceiling with a grotesque visage. The guard attempts to shoot him, but Morbius moves extremely quickly and climbs on him to feed, ignoring Martine's cries to stop. Morbius' sensitive ears begin to hurt as the ship's alarm begins to ring, and he begins to panic and damage the insulation room. Martine tries to halt the rest of the security team, but they push her away, knocking her out. Morbius successfully breaks the glass and leaps out of the room to demonstrate his new vampiric abilities, which allow him to evade gunshots and move rapidly to slaughter the guards without mercy. A few survivors flee and lock the door, but Morbius is now tremendously strong and quickly tears it down. Morbius then creeps over the ceiling again, taking his time to capture and kill the guards one by one. Morbius' body transforms back into its human shape once the entire crew is dead and he has fed enough, so he rushes to inspect himself in the mirror. Morbius goes check on Martine to see that she is okay, then he looks at the CCTV footage and throws up after seeing what he has done, but then he makes a mayday call, takes the serums, and leaps into the sea. Two FBI officers arrive at the ship the next morning to investigate the crime scene, but Morbius has destroyed all security recordings and Martine is still unconscious. The case quickly makes the news, which Nicholas and Milo observe. Morbius returns to the hospital and, after checking on his patients, proceeds to his laboratory to drop off the serums. His body soon begins to fail again, so he runs into the fridge to sip the artificial blood he's manufactured, so he can feed without killing anyone. He then begins to put his powers to the test. He is swift, athletic, can climb anything, and jump all over the place. When he enters the tank with the bats, they circle him with respect. He's developed echolocation in the same way that a bat does, so he puts it to the test by throwing a ball across the room and catching it with his eyes closed. Unfortunately, his abilities persist only as long as he feeds. For six hours, the artificial blood keeps him stable. He'll require fresh blood soon. He isolates himself in a room to put this to the test. Milo pays him a visit and discovers him in critical condition. Morbius requests blood by writing it with his own blood on the glass, so Milo fetches him a few bags from the freezer. Morbius recovers and becomes stronger as he feeds, and Milo is astounded by this cure. When Milo requests to be injected as well, Morbius informs him that he has made a mistake and that this cure is a curse. 
Morbius becomes angry and kicks Milo out because he continues to demand. Martine awakens and is approached by FBI officers who question her about the incident. Martine, on the other hand, says she has no memory of what happened that night. Later that evening, while working late, a nurse observes the lights behaving suspiciously. She flees in terror, but she is apprehended by a vampiric beast that kills her. Morbius is as astonished as his co-workers when the body is discovered in the morning and suspects he may have done it. Morbius is confronted by FBI investigators, who question him about his experiments and decide to arrest him. Morbius promptly defends himself and knocks them down with a few moves before fleeing up the stairs while dodging bullets from a cop. He gets it to the hospital roof and is surprised to notice that the air from the AC unit is stronger than usual, but before he can see what it is, he is arrested by the agents. When he's brought to the questioning room, he's handcuffed to the table, and agents arrive with holy water just in case. They accuse him for the fatalities on the ship as well as the nurse, but Morbius is losing control and begs for his phony blood bags. The agents do not take him seriously and he is returned to his cell. Milo pays Morbius a visit and offers him assistance as well as a pack of artificial blood. Morbius notices Milo has misplaced his cane and learns the truth. Milo stole the serum and injected himself and murdered the nurse. Morbius, enraged, consumes the blood, transforms into his vampiric form, and escapes from the prison. He used echolocation to detect Milo's assault on the owner of a newspaper kiosk. Morbius rushes out into the street to attack Milo, calling him a monster. Milo thinks this power is incredible and strikes Morbius. A ferocious battle begins, and as the vampires proceed to attack each other, they collide with the subway station, forcing citizens to flee in fear. Milo is pleased that they have evolved, but Morbius swears to find a solution. When the cops arrive to arrest them both, Milo rushes quickly and kills them. Morbius meets with Martine and tells her about Milo, Martine believes him. While Morbius assembles the pieces of printing machines to create the devices he requires to work on a cure for vampirism. Milo visits a nightclub and flirts with a lovely woman, but another man claims to have seen her first and pulls him away. Milo manages to keep his powers under control and leaves, but he waits outside and murders the guy and his pals when they come out. Martine goes to Morbius Medical Lab to get some supplies and finds Milo there, asking for his pal. Martine declares she has no idea where Morbius is and orders him to leave without a fuss. Morbius and Martine kiss on the roof after that, unconscious that Milo is watching them from afar. The next morning, FBI investigators uncover the bodies outside the pub and review the surveillance cameras, discovering Milo is the true murderer. Nicholas approaches Milo and begs him to stop killing people. Milo assaults Nicholas, gravely injuring him. Meanwhile, Morbius is able to create an antibody that will only affect a vampiric body. He makes two bottles, one for Milo and one for himself. At that point, he receives a call from Nicholas requesting assistance, Morbius rushes to reach Nicholas but Nicholas only manages to implore Morbius to stop Milo before dying. Milo kidnaps Martine and forces her to repeat Morbius' name until he can hear it with his power. Morbius flies through the city and discovers Martine on a roof, bleeding from a Milo wounds. She wishes Morbius would feed on her, but Morbius kisses her instead, causing a drop of his own blood to fall into her mouth. Martine dies at that point, and Morbius succumbs to his rage and feeds on her. Morbius then attacks Milo and jumps on him, causing both of them to fall off the edge. The vampires continue to assault each other and crash through a building on their way down. He grabs his leg and throws him against a glowing sign. Morbius dispatches bats to pursue him. Morbius arrives and injects Milo with the antibodies, enabling Milo to turn human and apologize before dying. Morbius mourns his loved ones and embraces his identity as a vampire after Milo dies. Unbeknownst to him, Martine has been resurrected as a vampire elsewhere, Adrian Toomes is transferred to Morbius' reality. Toomes contacts Morbius and offers that they create a team after deducing that his mode of transportation includes Spider-Man. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to watch more videos like this.